<clears throat> Are you interested in a career in human resources? Uh, or do you already work in HR, but you want to continue to grow your career in HR? Are you studying HR in university? Or do you have no idea what you want to be when you grow up? Uh, and so you want some inspiration listening to someone else's career journey? Or are you just curious uh, to know how I got into HR and what motivates me? Uh, well, God, you're in the right place because this is my personal vlog on why HR? Why do I work in HR? How did I get into HR? Uh, and I'm going to share with you my career journey uh, through HR. And so I'll try to throw in some some inspiration, some things to think about. And, and my hope is, is that uh, you have some some learning, some lessons, some key nuggets of information and insight that you can take away. Uh, that can positively impact your career, whether you've started it yet or not. All right, so I hope you get something from this video and me sharing. I love storytelling. I do. I think that that is the best way to coach others and to learn. And so anything I can share with you all, drop it in the comments. I'd love to share, um, but that is my motivation by sharing uh, my career journey with all of you. Now, please know that uh, this is my little disclaimer for this video. Uh, please know that there is no one right way uh, to enter any field. There's no one perfect career path for any field, for any job. There's just not. Uh, I think, especially if you haven't, um, you know, started your career yet, uh, most people have this notion that careers look like this, right? And they're like these perfect little stepping stones. You take a position, and then it leads to this position. Then you're promoted to this position. Then you're promoted again. And then this happens, and oh, it's so beautiful, and it all makes sense, right? Oh, I was an intern, and then I was a junior this, and then I was an associate this, and then I was a, a manager this, and then a senior manager, and then a director, and then a senior director, and then a VP, and then blah, 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 right? Uh, that is not what careers look like. No, no, that is not what careers look like. In fact, they, they kind of look like this, like, <laughs> and it, they're, they're uh, wow, right? Uh, and that, that is how an actual uh, career looks. And I have never seen two career paths of people doing the same job look the same. They always look different. Uh, people enter different fields and functions at different times and they learn different things in different places and they get demoted and they get doubly promoted and then they decide to take sabbaticals and then they decide to take time off to do something else and switch and change and pivot and respond and flex and then they had all these unforeseen things happen in their personal lives and. Uh, grief and tragedy and joys and miracles and you name it, um, but all of these things uh, impact careers, right? And so everyone's career looks totally different. So I'm going to share with you, uh, you know, mine, but that doesn't make it right. It just makes it mine. So please take that to heart. Okay, there is no one right way. And so if you, you want to do something similar to me, uh, you know, here's what I've done. Or more importantly, if you're trying to avoid uh, where, I, where I am and what I'm doing, please, you know, listen up. <laughs> I'm just, I'm always cheeky. I apologize for that. No, I don't. Uh, so my career. Now I'll tell you that I have always had an innate intrinsic curiosity about people. I love to understand people. Doesn't mean I like people. <laughs> More times than not, I probably don't um, because I know what they're capable of <laughs> and the things that they do. Uh, but no, I, I'm really not a people person. It's hard to be a successful HR person and be a people person because typically that means you just always want to please people. And that, that in HR means not doing the hard things sometimes, right? 
So people pleasers and people people, they, they do have sometimes a difficult time working in HR uh, because some of the decisions that they have to make, it may hurt, right? Because you're not always trying to please people. Oh, and so you have to think of everybody, not just one person, ah, you know, so it can be hard uh, for some folks. Um, but uh, I have always been incredibly curious about people. And I'm the type of person that can very easily put myself in someone else's shoes. I always try and strive to really understand the motivations and the behaviors so that then I can potentially see signs in other people of these things and be able to predict, you know, how other people may react. And I, I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just that way. I just, I love, uh, trying to understand people and their motivations. So I'm the one that's watching all the documentaries, all the all the ridiculous shows on the Netflix and well every platform. <laughs> I've got thank thanks to my cousin. I've got subscriptions to everything. Uh but I'm always watching those kind of uh, you know, uh the, the name escapes me, kind of the junk shows about people, right? Because I, mean, I always just want, I want to know. I want to just take it all in. And that intrinsic desire really to understand uh, others and the curiosity about people is what drove me to actually, in college, be pre-med uh, because I was on a psychiatry, a psychiatry track. Okay, so I wanted to be a psychiatrist, and then um, that first semester, two things happened. Uh, I realized that psychiatry has a 10 year residency. And I'm like, no way, Jose. <laughs> that that was a that was a really big turnoff, uh, coupled with the fact that, oh, I suck at science, right? The suck versus, you know, our doctors that are brilliant at it. <laughs> uh, still smart, you know, still a smart person, but uh, oof, oof. I have to do all of the sciences. Like I have to understand literally all of them. Uh, hmm. Probably not for me. <laughs> and so uh, I knew that, ooh, you know what? I don't want to go to med school. That's not for me. Let's leave it for the people that it's for. Uh, so that was one of my big discoveries there. My other discovery my first semester uh, was in an intro to psychology class. I will tell you, I was so excited to be able to get uh, to college and to be able to take a psych class. Because as I've already shared with you, I watch all of those shows <laughs> and I read all of those books about people. And so I, I was so excited to finally have the opportunity uh, to, you know, be able to take that sort of course. And so I took Intro to Psych uh, my first semester, and I discovered something in that course called Industrial Organizational Psychology. Um, you know, the quick and easy uh, explanation of IO psychology is that it's really just the psychology of people at work, right? And so, wow, you know, that, that fascinated me. And I continued on in my undergrad uh, to support multiple professors doing research in IO psychology. And then I was like, well, I'm going to go get my PhD in IO psych. This is for me, right? And so I graduated and I got into multiple schools and I was going to go do that. And, you know, that's when my second pivot happened. The first is when I said no being pre-med, no to medical school, and that, ooh, I really like this IO psych thing, let me go get my doctorate. And then in the summer before I was going on to do that, I, I pivoted again, and that took a lot of strength to pivot out of that IO psychology doctorate program because I had momentum. And a lot of times when you have momentum, it makes it difficult for you uh, to change directions, right? But uh, I had to because in my heart, I knew that I did not want to be a theorist 
I wanted to be a practitioner. So I wanted to be out in the workforce and I wanted to make an impact uh, in an organization and directly, very directly with people. And so I did not go on to that doctoral program, but instead reapplied and went to business school. And that was the right decision for me. Uh, you know, I was able to get into another program in that gap year, really, um, and volunteered and did some work and whatnot to try and prep and ready myself for the business program, uh, my degree in management. And so, but, but it, to me, it felt, of course, like kind of a step back. Remember, I told you a career kind of looks like this. Um, I lost that momentum because I paused pivoted and did something really entirely different related of course um, still directionally going where I wanted to go uh, but something that uh, I wasn't anticipating really until that last moment and having that heart to heart with myself and so I went on to um, get my master's in management and that was the right uh, course for me for sure. Uh, I absolutely adored that program. I had a graduate internship and in my graduate internship uh, that was my first experience uh, living away from home. Uh, so a lot of learnings that summer, far away, uh, a lot of learnings that summer uh, personally and professionally. <clears throat> and in that internship I was in a global learning and organizational development department, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Uh, we did some HR strategy redesign. We just also, I'd wanna, I don't wanna go into my resume with what I did that summer. I can still remember uh, all my projects and all the incredible colleagues that I had, really the honor. Uh, to work for uh, many who I'm still connected with I can just I mean, I'm, I know all their names uh, uh, Fantastic people making such an impact on that organization and its upskilling development and growth uh, so really cool experience uh, that summer and in that program in that management program I had discovered these things called HR leadership development programs, HR LDPs, HR leadership programs, HR LPs, they're called different things in, in different organizations, uh, but really they're really neat leadership programs that early career employees, new employees, straight out of college, typically graduate program level employees uh, can go into that would afford them uh, a lot of different experiences in a truncated amount of time, right? So I applied um, from when it came to off uh, program out of school, uh, full-time employment, uh, I only applied to companies and organizations that had these HRLP options uh, because the field of HR has a ton of different specialties within it. There's a lot of different areas and facets of HR that you can focus on. If you don't know what HR uh, professionals do, pause the video or after this video, go and just Google it. What does HR do, right? What do HR professionals do? And uh, it's fascinating because it is a lot of stuff. It is everything um, from the attract all the way to uh, the retire, right? The full employee life cycle. So the HR professionals are busy and there's specialists in each of these different facets. And so an HRLP gives the opportunity for someone to experience many of these different specialties in a short amount of time. So the HR leadership development program that I went into was two years, so my first two years with that company, and I had a different business and location each of the two years. So I lived in Denver and worked for one branch of an organization for the first year, and then in the second year, uh, I moved to Fort Worth and worked in another division of the corporation. and. In each of those years, 
I had two six months assignments. And so I was able to experience um, so many different specialties, talent acquisition, recruiting, staffing, uh, labor relations, um, EEO, diversity programs, um, and learning. Uh, again, some learning and talent development, instructional systems design, organizational development, uh, which I, I have a soft spot for. I love it. Uh, and so I was able to have basically tons of jobs, little projects uh, in all of these different areas and just, you know, kind of put a toe in, right? Uh, and just kind of test the waters to see where my strengths could be best leveraged within the field of HR. And so if you know you have an interest in HR, you're in school for HR, but you don't know exactly what you want to do in HR, an HR leadership program may be the right choice for you because uh, you can try on a whole bunch of things uh, very quickly and without penalty. You can go in, you can make a huge impact, and then you can try something new um, to try and figure out what it is you really want to want to do full time, right? Are you a specialist? Are you a generalist? Are you this? Are you that? And so, you know, I was able to experience so many things and so many projects. It was awesome. Uh, highly, highly recommend the opportunity. And I ultimately rolled off program and graduated the program and went into a labor relations role. <laughs> now, uh, who you know, I kind of pause right there because big job, okay? And at the time, uh, if I recall correctly, about 8% of the U.S. Uh, workforce was, was unionized and, and, you know, at the time. I think it's since increased. I think it was 11% last I looked a few years ago. Anyway, uh, but a very unique opportunity uh, to be able to go off program, off the HR leadership program into such a position uh, and experience uh, a very, very large unionized workforce uh, in a very red state. And so <laughs> I had at times thousands of employees across multiple unions, professional to trade, uh, and had the very unique experience of sitting at the table and negotiating and supporting and negotiating uh, multi-million dollar uh, contracts, labor contracts. Uh, so really cool experience. Now, I had many people ask me at the time, why labor relations? Because it's an, it can be contentious at its core. And I was working 24-7, 365 operations across three shifts. Uh, and so it's, it's a lot of work, right? Um, it was a mile and 25 foot long factory that I would walk. Uh, and just the, the issues that come your way are very, very unique, some of which I talk indirectly about in some of my content. <clears throat> and so just a very, very unique experience uh, in humanity, <laughs> being <laughs> deep in a workforce that way, uh, but, uh, but an incredible experience. But I had many, many people ask me, why would you go into labor relations? Uh, because it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. And I'll never forget, I asked a mentor, what do you think? What should I do? Would you recommend me going off program in labor relations? And they said, absolutely, because that's how you earn that HR badge of honor uh, by, you know, working in tough jobs that help you grow very, very quickly. No one ever grew in comfort. No one ever grows in comfort. And so if something's uncomfortable, if you're stressed, not in a bad way, but you know what I mean. If you don't know the answer to everything, uh, that's a great thing. Uh, that is a sign that you are growing. And so, boy, did I grow a lot. Boy, did I grow a lot uh, those few years there. 
Uh, but that is why I took that job because you can certainly uh, learn a lot. It wasn't a it wasn't a field that everybody else was in, so I didn't have a lot of connects or network, you know, to help me uh, successfully navigate through it, you know, with just this huge support system. I had to figure everything out on my own with the awesome team members that I worked with there, uh, and and I had to learn the nuances of negotiation and influence and some of my just my my big hr lessons that i've learned it came from that role so it came from my first experience which um is pretty profound uh for me because it sure did affect uh all my subsequent roles and my success in those roles right and and how i how i led in those roles and the decisions that i made right uh, so precedent is everything. Precedence is everything. And <clears throat> wow, I just had some very unique experiences uh, that helped form and shape me for the rest of my career. <laughs> mm. As you can imagine. <clears throat> but uh, but I absolutely loved it. And I love the people. I love working with union leadership. Uh, incredible people on both sides. Learn so much. Uh, but I decided that, gosh, I, you know, I, labor really isn't for me. I don't want to be uh, l and &E counsel, labor and employment counsel. I, it's just not what uh, I'm destined to do. And as I already mentioned, at its core, labor is contentious, right? You're always negotiating and settling something, and there's grievances and arbitrations that you're prepping for. And, and uh, to just always be in that environment was not something that I wanted for me. And so I ultimately moved on from that and I became, uh, you know, an HR leader, a client support uh, HR person. It can be called HR business partner in some places, HR generalist, but really uh, that HR client facing um, proactive uh, HR manager. And, and I did that uh, for a long time. Um, and that is, that's my bread and butter. Uh, that's what I love to do. And my, my resume is funny uh, because although I've, I've worked in very, very large, um, more mature uh, businesses, businesses that have been around a long time, only Fortune, really 50 organizations, maybe one was Fortune 70, I don't know, but uh, very mature organizations. Um, I've worked in newer subsets of those organizations, uh, you know, departments or divisions that were in flux, merger, restructuring, integration, acquisition, joint venture, just very uh, almost volatile and sometimes chaotic, but early, young, uh, early life cycle. Uh, portions of those businesses where maybe I didn't have a lot of support and maybe I had to figure a lot of things out on my own. Uh, maybe I couldn't even use the support from, you know, the, the core, the COEs, etc. Like literally was against the rules to do that per some sort of contract. And I would just have to negotiate things on my own, figure things out on my own. And so I had, I have had a career of stretch roles. <laughs> And uh, so I'll tell you that I am incredibly high in crisis management. When something crazy happens, this is typically how I am. It's like something crazy happened. Well, I've seen crazy before, so let's just all calm down, right? I'm not, uh, I do not run around with my hair on fire. You will never see that. That is, nope. <laughs> and I spend most of my work day laughing. Uh, really laughing at things uh, that that happen, right? Um, because it's it's not life or death. We're gonna get through it. Uh, let's not take ourselves uh, so seriously here. Let's just think of let's think things through methodically and and get to the best solution. And so, I have had a career of stretch assignments in that way, uh, where I've been put in just really difficult or unique situations, and I've been thrown in to navigate through them. And I kept seeking those out, and that's why I love HR transformation organizational health, uh, all these sorts of things, because I've helped transform and, and grow and develop businesses by really putting, you know, foundation and structure in, whatever, whatever the case was. 
Uh, but I love uh, crafting and creating unique solutions uh, for organizations on the people side. And I found a knack for that, and I kept getting promoted for that, and I kept being recognized for that, and that was the way I could leverage my strengths best and be successful. And so, you know, my feedback to all of you is that, you know, through grade school, I swear, you know, ever since we're, we're young, uh, that which makes us different and differentiates us and it makes us unique, uh, you know, we try to avoid those things, right? We get made fun of those. We get made fun of for those things. Uh, and we, we spend our formative years and the first part of our lives trying not to be special. Think about it, right? You're trying to fit in or else you get bullied at school or whatever, right? Uh, but when you're an adult and you, you are in the workplace, um, the way to get promoted, to be recognized, etc., is to differentiate yourself and develop a brand. You have got to work very hard to understand what your strengths are, and then you need to ruthlessly exploit them as much as possible so that you are known for doing that. Oh, Lee is known for crafting, developing, and deploying HR strategies. Lee is known for uh, HR transformational work. Lee is known for, right? Like you, you create a brand for yourself um, through what makes you unique. Uh, finally, those things that make you special are your differentiators that are worth a lot of money to a lot of different organizations and people. Uh, you have an expertise that only you, you're the only person in the world that can do what you do. And it makes you very, very special. It makes you sought after in your organizations. Uh, so don't shy away from those things that make you you and make you unique. Start leaning into those more. And if you don't know what you're good at, ask your boss, ask your colleagues, ask your friends. Uh, because any of those things uh, can be a real brand maker for you and differentiator that can open tons of opportunities and tons of doors through your career. And so I did have the great fortune of very early in my career uh, partaking in whatever assessments on, you know, what my skills and strengths are. And even being a psychology major really, really helped me. Uh, so I may have failed to mention that when I pivoted off of pre-med, I went straight to psychology as my major. And so I was able to take the Myers-Briggs as the under, as an undergrad disc, whatever, name any assessment, right? I probably took 30 assessments, uh, or so, but it afforded me insight into me that then I could turn around as I entered the workforce and leverage those skills, right? Um, and that has always and if, if I love Strength Finder, I'm not promoting them in any way, like financially, but I love the message of figure out what you're great at and, and really focus on that because you see no one else has the same set of unique strengths you have. And no one uses them the same way you do, right? And whatever field you are in. And so that's like, that's your magic, right? That's your special sauce, you know? So uh, whatever those strengths are, really focus on those and work on things that maximize those uh, special skills and strengths of yours because that's how you maximize your opportunity for exposure and awesome projects and great jobs and promotions and work and whatever uh, because you are 95 your 95th percentile in those things right I mean wow like no one else has those things that's incredible and wow you can really make an impact uh, utilizing those strengths that's great where again here's another thing you know from the formative years up from you know preschool still through the working world a lot of in a lot of places we're taught to focus on your development needs and just stay focused on your development needs and try to get better and i'm like but i'm only 
fifth percentile on this thing. Why would I spend 95% of my efforts on something I'm fifth percentile and only have a hope of maybe uh, increasing that to like 13th percentile because I'm just not naturally inclined, interested, or good at it? Why would I focus all my energies and efforts and time on becoming not even decent <laughs> at something? <laughs> When I'm already a rock star over here, so gosh, let me take my 90th percentile thing up to like 95th, 96th percentile, and then I'm untouchable in an organization. No one can do what I can do in an organization, right? Uh, no one has this mix of strengths and can make the impact I can when I'm focused on leveraging my strengths to their max potential. So anyway, so I've spent a career basically doing that and being promoted because of that. And that would be my ultimate advice to you all is we only have so much precious time on earth, right? And how do you want to spend that time? Doing the things you enjoy or trying to develop in areas that really do not serve you and maybe you're not even interested in. Uh, that's one of the big things that I've done in my career that I feel is different than what other people have done in their career. And that's that. And that is that I have chased joy. I have chased impact. So I've always wanted to have a big impact on other people, uh, helping them maximize their success uh, in their working lives, especially, but even personally. Uh, and so, you know, coaching is what brings me the most joy, uh, in HR. And now look, uh, what I do <laughs> in my spare time. Um, you know, I just, I, I just love it, you know? So uh, the times that I have chased joy, the times that I have chased impact have never failed me. And again, that's why my career may look like this a little bit and may, you know, maybe not, make sense to anybody else except for me and what my needs are and what brings me joy and that's really the beauty of a career journey you define for you what you want out of your career is it tons of money is it tons of accolades is it rewards what is it achievement is it security is it what is it and that thing may change and it may be multiple things right and that's okay it's always in flux it's always fluid because there's no one right way to have a career to grow a career to become successful because what is the definition of success? It's a personal one. There is no textbook definition that success means you're super rich and famous and you're the CEO. Maybe success is, is that you maximize your potential, you maximize your impact, you maximize your joy wherever you go doing whatever you do. Right? So there is no one right way to do anything. There is no one right career path. But I certainly do hope that, uh, you know, insights from my career and where I focused early career uh, help you uh, determine where you want to go and where you want to be and what may motivate and drive you. Uh, I certainly wish you the absolute best and just know that it's not a race. You're not competing against anybody. You can enjoy the journey. You can absolutely enjoy the journey. Chase joy, chase impact, figure out what success is to you and just enjoy it. There's no one right way to have a career. All right, all my best to you all. I hope this gave you something. Uh, you all take care. Reach out to me if I can support or help you in any way. Uh, drop in the comments any other content uh, that you would like coaching on as well. All right, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Take care.